This is the Pipistrelle Veles Electro, the first electric aircraft to attain EASA certification, which consequently grants its own place in aviation history. The aircraft is lightweight, beautifully quiet, and remarkably simple to pilot, and on top of that, it costs less than $5 per hour in electricity. Is this the future of aviation? Will electric planes replace traditional aircraft? Today we're going inside the Pipistrelle Veles Electro to talk about everything you need to know about this revolutionary aircraft. The typical Pipistrelle top hinge doors provide easy cockpit access and there are elegant pin and clip devices which hold them open and a system of three pins actuated by a single handle that locks them closed. The controls are very familiar. The rudder pedals adjust, the sticks are nicely sided, the trim switch is correctly color-coded green, and the inflatable lumbar support is a nice touch. However, the flap lever is slightly awkwardly positioned and the trim indicator is a bit difficult to see. Mounted on the floor between the seats is a quadrant that carries the T-handled power lever, which the pedestal that braces the instrument binnacle carries numerous circuit breakers and four silver toggle switches for the master, avionics, battery, and power. The instruments are particularly interesting. The top row consists of a large analog ASI and altimeter with a multi-function Horis unit between them. Made in Slovenia by a company called Canardia, this very sophisticated electronic device is fed from various sensors via a controller area network bus. It offers several display options, but the primary page is very comprehensive attitude heading reference system display which shows attitude and roll and pitch, airspeed, vertical speed, altitude, outside temperature, wind speed and direction, heading, and the barometric setting. It's an amazing bit of a kit, but you can also find the Electric Propulsion System Indicator 570C. This has multiple pages. For example, when connected to the charger, it shows the state of charge in percentage and the temperatures of the batteries and inverter. When flying, the flight page shows RPM and power in both digital and analog formats, state of charge in percentage, time remaining, voltage in the main and auxiliary avionics battery, temperatures of the front and rear propulsion system batteries, and coolant temperatures for the engine and battery systems. There is also an enunciator panel above the Horis which has the master warning and master caution captions to inform the pilot about malfunctions and failures in the propulsion system. These are reinforced by oral warnings. There's also a second small warning panel which is specifically designed to warn about battery over temperature. It is analog and consists of battery temperature sensors and two warning LED lights, one for each battery pack, which illuminate if the battery temperature exceeds 58 degrees Celsius. At the base of the panel, and looking somewhat dated, is a classic slip ball. So far, so familiar. But it's the powertrain and its controls that are the most intriguing part, and unusually, but also unsurprisingly, they are all made by Pipistrelle. To power the motor, there are two lithium-ion battery packs. One is in the nose, and the other is in the rear fuselage, each delivering 11 kilowatt hours, so a total of 22 kilowatt hours. Each battery pack has an integral battery management system which monitors, manages, and balances the individual cells, the associated cooling system, and the calculation of the all-important state of charge and the state of health, of which more later. Critical numbers like voltage, SOC, and SOH are all displayed on the electronic power plant system interface which is basically the electric equivalent of a sophisticated engine information system in a piston airplane. It's an instrument that gets a lot of pilot attention throughout any flight. To keep everything at the right temperature, there are two liquid 50% automotive glycol, 50% water cooling systems. One for the batteries and one for the motor inverter, with the inverter being the piece of equipment most likely to get very hot very quickly should there be a cooling system malfunction. Before talking about energy use, it's worth covering SOC and SOH. The first of these, state of charge, is fairly simple and can be thought of as an electric equivalent of a fuel gauge. With a bit of luck, you'll be starting off at 100%, but 
but if it happens to read 50% or less, go directly to the charging point before flying, and once you are flying, plan to land with at least 30% SOC. The second, state of health, is not quite so straightforward. If we stick to the fuel analogy, it sort of means the fuel tank capacity. But while you would expect the fuel tank to remain the same size through its life, a battery's capacity will gradually diminish. Meaning that while you may be departing with 100% showing on the SOC, if your SOH is only reading say 40%, you will have considerably less range or endurance. Your fuel tank gets smaller over time, so range and endurance planning and management requires knowledge of both figures. The EPSI will also give your remaining flight time value, but this is obviously only calculated on the current power setting, which is why that number looks scary when you are climbing out under full power, so it has to be treated appropriately. To make it easier to grasp these concepts, assuming your SOH is 100%, a 1,000 foot climb will use 7% of your SOC, but if you are flying around with an older set of batteries that have an SOH of 40%, that same climb will use 10% of your 100% SOC. Once you are up there and in the cruise with power set to 25 kilowatts or 80 knots, every 10 minutes of flight will use up another 19% of your state of charge, or 28% if your SOH is 40%. From these numbers, it should be pretty clear that when flying the Velus Electro, you need to be on top of your planning, and very situationally aware when it comes to energy levels. If you need any more persuasion, the fact that the aircraft has no heater, and a section in the POH discussing point of no return calculations should be enough of a clue. Talking about performance numbers, the Velus Electro has a maximum cruise speed of 98 knots, a ceiling of 12,000 feet or 3,660 meters, and a maximum range of 108 nautical miles, which is 124 miles or 200 kilometers. The plane can take off in 1,342 feet or 409 meters, has a maximum rate of climb per minute of 647 feet or 197 meters, a maximum takeoff weight of 1,320 pounds or 600 kilograms, a maximum net payload of 378 pounds or 172 kilograms. The base purchase price for the new Velus Electro is around 175,000 pounds or slightly less than $200,000 before options, and the average hourly operating cost is estimated at $60 to $80. Pipistrel says batteries need to be replaced after around 2,000 flight hours, an indicator on the battery says exactly when, and the price for a new pair is approximately $20,000. Thank you for staying with us to the end. Here are two videos you can watch next. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.